morning everyone it's Wednesday January 9th 2019 and I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord I have um, some scripture and a devotion for you but first as always I like to say the hour so please join me our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. I love you very, very much. All right. This is called God, the Sovereign Savior. Now, if you're on my channel, you know that um, I firmly uh, believe that our Heavenly Father is sovereign over everything. He can do anything he wants at any time. Okay? And... Um, there's no pigeonhole in the, you you can't hold him to anything um, he works all things for the greater good of you and for his glory okay now uh, the greater good of you <laughs> it might seem terrible what you're going through but it could be for the greater good of you um, if it's chastisement, it's for the greater good of you. But while you're in it, you're not going to like it. Okay, nobody likes being reprimanded. Nobody likes being told what to do. No one likes losing complete power and control in their lives. And many many times the Lord uses this to strip you of your narcissism and your pride so the only way you can turn is towards him uh, in the flesh this is terribly disturbing and uh, feeling entrapped and powerless and um, but to the Lord you know he's bringing you towards him see it's a different way of thinking um, the Lord will not be uh, pigeonholed he will not be held hostage to abominations um, of sin he hates sin he despises sin and if you're truly born again and a child of God you will hate sin and you will love everything that the Lord loves that's just the way it is if you look in life children take after their parents okay many times we can see um, familiarities in children to their parents they begin to do and say the same things they begin to follow the same path as their parents and um, there's no difference in the spiritual world if you're following sin um, and you're defending it, then then Satan is your father. Plain and simple. If you don't hate the things that you do that God hates, then there's something to be said about what seed you are. There are many, many distinctions in the Bible where the Lord says, your father is the father of lies and lies you will tell okay and all the wickedness comes from um, from uh, Satan's offspring okay and I said you can only go two ways in this life if you're not yielding to our Heavenly Father and his commands and his precepts and his ways and who he is and embrace it then you're not on his team plain and simple God is sovereign and he's not the God that you 
have been used to hearing about for the last several decades. He's a false Christ that you have been hearing about. The Jesus that loves everything and forgives everything and doesn't hold you accountable for anything and gives you a pass on everything. That is not the Jesus of the Bible. That is not our Heavenly Father. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the reason I am so fixed on this is because you need to wake up to who God really is. You need to get out of the, um, what do you call it? There's in, the, in the fun house, there's a, um, a room of mirrors, right? Where all you see is you. <laughs> yeah, house of mirrors or whatever. You need to get out of that. Because it's not reality. It's not all about you. Satan is all about him. And when you follow Satan, it's all about you. So um, if everything that you think, do, and say goes back to you, you need to examine yourself really, really closely because you are in a lie. And that lie is like a balloon that's going to pop. And when that balloon pops, the reality is going to fly right into your face. Hopefully, when it is not too late. Because then there won't be too much you could do about it. Okay, I'm reading from Psalm 18, verses 1 through 12. And it says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surround me and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surround me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills also quaked and was shaken because he is angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Colds were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy all around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. People, if this doesn't show you who God is, it's not all of who God is, but it is God. This is the God of the Bible, not the New Age God. Not the New Age God that has everybody convinced that they can sin. And it's like they're a gambler, you know, they, they do these sins and they test the Lord to see how much they can get away with. They test the boundaries of the Father's patience. Unlike a believer who is walking in the will of God, who is making an investment, okay, into the kingdom. 
okay, they are, their obedience is an investment because they know what the next world has in store for them and they want to please the Father, not the flesh. Okay, the devotion reads, when we are victorious over battles of life, we are relieved. Hallelujah, I can tell you that. I, uh, the Lord had, uh, and I had worked together on some of my issues and um, we closed many, many doors together. Uh, remember, you can do nothing apart from him. So you need his ministry of the Holy Spirit to help you uh, rise out from your shackles. As we recall God's faithfulness, there is a spiritual bond between us and God. Yes, there is. When someone saves your life, there's a bond. When a fireman runs into a burning building and saves you from the licking flames that would have killed you, there's a bond between you and that fireman. When, the, when somebody pulls you out of a, a car that just flipped over on the road and is on fire, there is a bond between you and that person who saved your life. And Jesus is the one that saves. And when he pulls you out of this world, he saves you from the death of this world and gives you eternal life. An intimacy is established and a deep and deepened that only victory can create. You see, in any relationship, even an earthly relationship, when two people are have hearts of God in them, they can appreciate and love what one partner does for the other. They see it and they respect it and it deepens their commitment to that person because they see that that person went the extra nine yards for them and that's what jesus did when he died on the cross he went uh further than any person could ever go to help save you from the devouring clutches of this world David felt this way as well. God had protected him from his enemies and he was relieved. Nothing gives relief like victory. David had seen the hand of God, God protect and sustain him because God's activity was so strong within him, through him and around him that David became more devoted to God than ever before. Now, you know, a lot of people out there who are promoting sin would, would recall David's failures, okay? Uh, like when he, uh, you know, um, had Bathsheba's husband killed on the front lines of battle so that he could take another man's wife. Yeah, this is all terrible to God. But David, David, quickly rose from his amnesia from his sinful amnesia because that's what satan does he puts a carbon monoxide cloud around you so that you forget who you serve and it isn't until after you do the the ghastly deed that you wake up abhorring what you did and cry out to the Lord for forgiveness. And sometimes God uses those sinful ways that we get into to help uh, polish us. To wake us up. To reveal how powerful he is. Because the wages of sin is death. But the mercy and forgiveness of God is fresh every morning. So, you know, when you do something from amnesia, not, not from, from an evil perspective, like you 
um, you have an evil heart. No, you maybe have gotten caught in something that has his clutches on you. You turn to the Lord for help. The Lord could use anyone to fulfill his purposes here on earth. God himself became his divine warrior using many military metaphors about God. David testified of God's strength and power. He shared that God was his fortress, his rock, his mighty one, his protector his refuge and his security. When we walk through the battles of life, and there will be battles, God teaches us about himself. See, many people go through battles, but they don't learn. And the reason they don't learn is because they're carnal minded and they're not spiritual. And they don't see that every thing that they think, do, and say is being navigated by a sovereign God. They take credit for their victories and they refuse to acknowledge their failures. We discover who he is. We learn as David learned of his sovereign power and protection in our lives. When deliverance comes, not only is a relief felt, but praise to God alone comes from the depths of our hearts. God has delivered you. If so, tell God that you love him. Fill heaven with your gratitude. Lift up all that God has been to you during the battles in your life and bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. If God helped you close some doors that were keeping you bound with a ball and chain and shackles, okay, lift up your hands and praise the Lord. And please, people, don't go and open a door that the Lord has closed for you because it will be harder to work your way back. To freedom if you don't know our sovereign God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today is the day of salvation and you can be free you can be free of all your addictions all of the unholy activities that go on in your life uh, the enemies around you God could lift you out of all of it. There's nothing that God can't do, people. Nothing. Nothing. I could write a book with all the things that the Father did that I became aware of after he did them. Many of them I wasn't aware of while I was in it, but then afterward, um, as I got to know the Lord more, I realized that it was him that did those things. And they were powerful things that he did in my life, like defy the laws of physics. Um, I could only tell you things that I've experienced myself, but you know, you're never going to really get it until you start walking in the spirit yourself, because your walk is going to be different than my walk. We have, everyone has a different walk because no two people are the same. We're like snowflakes. We're all different, different personalities. Everyone is unique which we can praise the Father for because you know how many trillions and trillions of people were born since the Adam and Eve and everyone is a unique make and model. That is, that is praiseworthy in itself, isn't it? 
That's what that phrase, when God made you, he threw away the mold. That's right. There may be some people that resemble you, but no one has your fingerprint. You are wonderfully made and very unique. And God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you on the cross so that you can make your way back to the Father and have eternal life. I'm going to put the salvation video right behind this. If you haven't come to the Lord, today is your day. Today is your day to make a commitment and turn over your life and put it in the hands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You've tried it for all these years and it doesn't work, does it? So give, give the Lord a chance to rework your life so that you can live more abundantly. The only thing you're giving up is your pain and suffering. I could tell you that. All right. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. He's coming so soon. Don't die in your sins, people. Accept the Lord now. Follow along. God bless you. <laughs>